So you can see today on the syllabus, I meant to get started Wednesday, but we had a few things to finish up. This will be easy for you, I'm hoping. But if you are feeling like, hey, I need to slow down, it's your job to say, hey, Mr. Manning, go back to that uh, because I don't want to leave you behind in the dust. I will be recording this because we want to make these available to uh, an online course as well. So we're going to get started in Word. Remember, Word is not the cloud word. We're not using Word in the cloud anymore. And it's been funny, the last, last semester, it was like halfway through, a, the, I think, the second Word project. And I come, they're needing help. And I went, because they didn't see the same thing I was seeing. And they were here using the cloud app, because it looks so much like Word. They're fooling you. We're using the local Word application now. And how do I start the local Word application? Well, I can come down to my search bar and start typing Word. Now, I hope you're all logged in with your username because then it will remember your settings for you. If you're using the student login, your files are going to disappear if you're uh, using that one. And your preferences might get messed up and someone may actually mess up your, your desktop background. So I look for Word and I find it here. Now I can click on that, but before I click on it, I can right click on that and if I want, pin it to my taskbar. You can see mine is saying unpin because there is Word pinned to my taskbar. Anything you pin to your taskbar it will always be right here on your little lower menu bar. You, sometimes you can actually see it in your desktop as well. But I like to pin it to my taskbar because I use it so often. Things that I don't use very often, I can come down here and unpin from my taskbar. So I'm going to go ahead and use and type, click on the word, and it will start the word application. Pops it up, ready to start a new document. Now it's going to remember some recent documents that you have done, and this is another reason why we have your own personal login, is because it remembers your documents, and we don't want you get messed up and somebody messing with your document by. Oh, there's what is that? And they'll open up, mess up your document if you're using that standard student login. So having your own login, it will remember these and it will remember them even if you go to a different computer in this room. It only applies to, compu to the computers in this room at this point. If we find this is handy dandy, we may have this kind of thing go to all the school computers that are available to you, like the ones in the library, where you log in and you see all the things you've done on any school computer. Many schools that have a larger IT department, because it does take a little more work to support all that, any school computer you log in and you see all your documents. But that takes a lot of work and uh, it's fairly expensive to pay lots of the IT people. Okay, so I'm going to start a blank document. Oh, and I just click on that and it opens Word up in the standard Word editor. To know that it's running an uh, application, I can actually do Control alt delete and go to my task manager. That handy dandy program that tells you what's running on your computer, it's more a nerdy thing, but you can see lots of cool stuff about what is actually running. Even though I haven't started anything, notice I see that, well, I've got all these things handling running. Some of them I have no idea what they're doing, but uh, you can see some of them don't take up much memory at all but yeah there's there's lots and lots of programs and as you get newer versions of Windows you'll probably see more and more programs running it's ridiculous how many programs are running in the background they call those background processes up here at the top these are the apps that are running and I see that I have actually 38 tabs in Chrome are open and I didn't even I don't even see 38 tabs so I'm must have some wildly open. I'm gonna go close a few and see if that number changes immediately. I'm gonna close that one. See if the number goes down. Oh, doesn't doesn't go down. Maybe a test. Oh, there it went down. So I close the tab in Chrome. Every tab in Chrome uses up some memory, but I see so far I'm only at 32%. I'll start worrying if I'm at 90% or more. Then I'm thinking, hey, I need more memory. That's the task manager. Quick little view at that. Okay, back to Word. We're going to be creating a document that's going to look like this. Let me bring up my book. I have the book online so I can pop up screens. We're going to be creating a flyer 
that's going to look something like this. And it's not going to be super detailed, but remember this class is for some that perhaps haven't seen Word yet, and it's up to you to uh, ask questions. Don't worry, you, you may be the only one, or you may be the only one willing to ask and admit that, hey, maybe you need to help with something. But this is going to produce a shaded paragraph with some large font, a centered paragraph, a border around our document, and a numbered list, an image, a bulleted list, and a signature line. Fairly simple document. Shouldn't take us very long to do this. So let's get started. All right, first thing I do before I do anything else, any actually writing, we want to set up the content of our document to have the right formatting. And that involves the margins. Well, how do I change my margins? Well, there's somewhere up there in the control ribbons. We got to get familiar with the various ribbons. And when I first start, I have the home ribbon as the typical one you see first. But the, the ribbon that controls my margins that we're going to want to learn about is the layout tab. These are called tabs. So you have the file tab or the uh, back, uh, backstage. There's the home, insert, design, layout, references, mailings, review, view, help. The layout tab is what we're going to go to. And under the layout ribbon, we see margins. And I click on that. Anything that has a little arrow thingy under it means if I click on it, I'm going to get more. And I can choose a standard set of margins, half inch all around. That's what we're going to eventually use. Before I leave this, so I'm going to show you that if you ever wanted your own set of margins, I can click custom margins and I could choose any strange combination of margins that I like. So someone that gives you a midterm maybe give you some strange margins so you know how to go and modify custom margins. Clicking OK, I see my margins change. And did you notice my little rulers that I'm showing, their little margins jumped too. Now, the View tab controls whether you see your ruler. When I first started Word, the ruler was always there. And the ruler has some interesting things we're going to learn to work with. If you don't want to see your ruler, or if it's not turned on and you'd like to see it, you can click that little checkbox to show me the ruler. And you can even show grid lines and navigation pane. But I don't care to use see the grid lines or navigation pane. But I do like seeing the ruler, so my checkbox is on. And again, if you're logged into your login, your Word now will remember your preferences the next time you start Word on any other document. So you can view this. You can adjust your viewing of your page. And I'm going to go back to the layout and go back to the narrow margins rather than my custom margins. So I click Narrow. I could always adjust my margins here by just grabbing that ruler. But if I mess that up and I want to go back to standard, I can go back to narrow margins. And it pops my root margins. So the ruler does show you where your margins are. Sometimes that's helpful. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so now let's continue. Now we're going to put in some text into our document, and we'll come back later and prettify it. We're going to adjust it. So right now we're just putting in the content. Normally, I would say you probably adjust the look of it as you type. But we're going to do the content first and then come back and format it. As I hit enter, I have started a new paragraph. One way to know whether you have a paragraph is I, come, I can come back to the Home tab. And I can turn on and off paragraph markings. This is the, the most time this has been helpful for me is I, someone else gives me their document and it's all sort of messed up and they want me to fix it. I will immediately turn this on so I can see where they actually have their paragraphs. Sometimes a, a document's messed up because they don't realize they've put paragraphs in in strange places. And paragraphs have a certain behavior that can affect how your documents look. So this is nice to know where your paragraphs are. Most of the time, though, they're ugly and in the way, so I turn them off. When I want to see where they are, I can just click and, and turn on my markings. OK, now we have some content. I've hit Enter. And now we're going to add some more content that's going to be then become 
cool things in my and informative messages in my wonderful document about hygiene, personal hygiene. Washing your hands. Are you washed? I'm going to zoom a little bit so you can read that best. I'll zoom into my margin. There we go. Spelled it wrong. Oh, I get a red squiggly. Now I could wait and come back or I could immediately correct that misspelling of soap by right clicking, correct it, or I could manually backspace and retype it if I can't remember how to spell soap. And water can decrease. Outbreaks of food. Now I see a red squiggly. I'm going to right click on that and fix that spelling. If you have any issues with your typing speed, you will do yourself a great favor since you're going to be doing a lot of papers in college to work at your typing speed right now and work at your technique. If you're a two finger typer, you might want to work at that. Uh, and if you want any help with typing speed, you just go to Google and type typing speed and you will find all sorts of things that will help you increase your typing speed. <clears throat> I don't know if the ASC has anything. They, they actually at the ASC may have something you could go there and actually they may have something they could help you. I would say just go online, try speeding your typing up. Even if you're a fast typer, these are kind of fun to try. Uh, Fast typing will just make your life easier when you're working on something. You'll just be able to get it done faster. Uh, my son challenged me, challenges me occasionally, sends me the screenshot of his typing speed. He is at a ridiculous 80 and above. I don't know how he does it. Uh, I don't know if he practices a lot. I think young fingers can just go faster than old fingers. But I'm up there. I can occasionally get to 60 when I'm fo focused. Uh, maybe 70, but... He, he's amazing and he and he does he doesn't type all his time he do, he's doing coding I don't think he's typed a ton of stuff but he's he likes to challenge himself to to exceed at certain skills and one of them is chess and the other is typing speed he beats me at chess now I used to beat him all the time when he was a kid okay now we're gonna type something that's going to become a numbered list we're not gonna worry about making a numbered list we're just gonna put the content in and then later format it wet hands with clean in the book they they put in a purposeful uh, spelling error I do enough without trying and apply so I can right click on that oh and I forgot the period I can right click on that and correct the spelling oh look it's not the first choice this time clean running water so and now, uh, lather, hands, palms, back, below nails, between fingers, around thumbs, by rubbing them together with the soap. The most time I actually follow these rules is when I've been working on my car and my hands are all greasy. That's when you really have to follow these, otherwise I get lazy. Scrub hands. Here they insert a purposeful misspelling, but I don't get a red squiggly because it is a correctly spelled word. Now you may be getting a blue squiggly under the word and I'm not sure why I'm not getting blue squigglies. I should have a blue squiggly under F-O-R-E because it's the incorrect word for that context. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why I'm not getting it. And then rinse soap. It forgets I need to put a comma there and let me show you something let's see if you get it dry 
hands well using a towel towel or they put in two ores there I do get a red squiggly so it's catching something and air dryer now I'm just gonna admit, uh, type the word the incorrectly I'm gonna spell T-E-H and I've hit space notice the got auto corrected there is auto correcting happening on certain commonly misspelled words that you may not realize it's correcting for you I'm gonna come back and fix this let's see what it suggests there it does see the repeated word and gives it a red squiggly I would have expected a blue squiggly but it, it's correctly spelled I can delete the repeated word here where's the four here I should see a blue squiggly raise your hand if you are getting a blue squiggly if you spell f-o-r-e I don't I'm gonna have to figure out why I'm not getting grammar maybe I've got something wrong because I've have I've messed with my settings it's not seeing that grammar correction there what it should be so I'm gonna fix that manually myself oh and I'm gonna put one more thing that's not in the book but I think it's something very important uh, use the paper towel to open the door when leaving the restroom I don't know about you but there's been more than one time especially at camps how many do any Christian camp ministry children's camp when are those children around very common when you go to open the door it's a wet handle on that <laughs> door leaving and you know kids are not always remembering to wash their hands so keep that in mind and I do it here too just out of habit uh, especially when there's cold going around as winter's coming uh, that's a good practice I read one the guy says if there's not a wastebasket near the door of the bathroom throw it on the floor so people that clean the bathroom will realize there should be a wastebasket there I don't do that I toss it in the in the rest on the waste can but uh, you might think about that I don't know how many times I've run into a wet handle on a door thinking ooh maybe I should go wash my hands again <laughs> Especially when there's kids around. All right, it is checking the grammar as we type. We're gonna leave a blank line, and I can see there's a blank line by turning on my formatting, and I see, oh, there's a blank line there. We're gonna be putting an image here later on. But we're, not, we're just getting our text for now. Now we're ready to continue our next set of lines, which are going to become a bulleted list. So it's going to be when, question mark, and then the content here. I'm going to turn off those paragraph marks. It's going to be after eating, coughing, sneezing, or using a tissue. And because it's a bulleted list, they are not using putting a period at the end of the sentence. I just noticed that. Before, during, and after preparing food. Of course, you're preparing food at the sink to allow you to be continually washing after each condiment. After using or assisting someone in the restroom. You nursery workers, or parents or helpers of people that need help realize this often they have little gloves after touching an animal animal feed I never thought about animal feed animal waste Oh, and I forgot the or animal waste since it's the last one. When I was a kid, turtles were, for a while were the big pet that kids should go have. They had them at the pet store. And then there was a rash of salmonella poisoning among children. They realized maybe reptiles aren't the best thing for kids to have as pets. Although I do like checking out reptiles and showing them to kids, reminding them about salmonella Co very common with reptiles because they 
don't clean themselves. And then our last line is going to become our signature line. It's not going to have a spe uh, extra paragraph after it, so we're just going to put our signature line visit, visit www.foodworkers.com for additional hand washing tips. That is a complete sentence. We're putting a period after that. Now, so far, I have done a lot of typing, done correction. I have not saved this document yet because Word as an application, it is saving it in a secret place that it will recover if you turn off the computer right now or quit Word without, I think if you quit without saving it, it will erase it. But if you accidentally crash the computer or unplug it right now, you sh will be able to recover your document usually, but the control S is our friend, or click in the little shape of the uh, historical view of what floppy disks used to look like. I can click on that, and because I haven't saved it yet, it takes me to the save as dialog. And this is where you can choose if you want, if you're logged in, if you want to sign in now, you could actually sign in and save it to your OneDrive. You're welcome to do that. You can browse and so show, save it in your documents folder. I'm going to save it to my special folder that I have on this computer on a special hard drive just for me. But for you, I will put it in your documents folder. Maybe make a CS101 folder and save it in there. I'm, I have a special folder just for this course way down in my document CS101. 2023 fall CS 101 section 2 in there I'm going to save it as well wash your hands that's not a bad title to have in there I'm gonna arrow left to the end of the or to the beginning of that file and put WD 1 because this is word project 1 and then I'm gonna put my fictitious student named J smart you want to put your full name or your username so WD 1 your name username or first and last name. If you want to leave wash your hands in there, that's fine. That kind of reminds you what's in that document. Pay attention to where you save it. It's, you're likely, and it's a good idea, save it in your documents folder, but if you'd like to sign in and save it to your OneDrive, that's fine too. As long as you know where it is. The nice thing about saving it to your OneDrive is if you're ever at a computer that does not, it's not in this classroom, you can just go to your OneDrive and, and re it'll download from the internet and let you edit it as it looks very much like you're editing it uh, on a local file but your OneDrive depends on the network working but that's not a bad place to save it you you could save it in your Google Drive I, I guess Word does it'll let you save it to your OneDrive if you use I think if you use Google uh, shared drive you may be able to use that or use Dropbox your choice what's it you can upload it to Drive. right yeah you can upload it uh, I don't know if you can save it as to Google Drive. You can save it and then upload it later. I forget if there's a way to actually make your Google Drive look as though it's a drive on your computer. Uh, maybe I'll mess with that because I used to do that. But OneDrive is a fine place too because you all have your uh, office.com account and that gives you that OneDrive. Okay, so uh, I've, I'm going to now do a save. And there's no indication. You know, I I think they would do good by having a little indication here that this this little icon changes color when you've done some editing that needs to be saved. What happens is you'll do some editing, and the only reason you'll know it needs to be saved is you go to close it, and it'll say, "Do you want to save changes?" Oh yeah, I guess I did some, make some changes. Okay, so now we have our document saved, and as you're learning Word using Word. You want to get familiar with the various ribbons on the menus. We're going to be playing a little bit with these ribbons. We're going to play with design and with, uh, I'm going to show you a little insert. And we've already seen the view ribbon that lets you turn on or off your rulers. Review, later we can actually come and do a global spelling check. References, we're going to come to in our third project, I believe. This is very handy if you're doing documents that need footnotes or, or bibliographies, learn about learn how to use references. They will help you 
format beautiful bibliographies without a lot of pain. Layout, that is where we did our margins. So back to our home tab. We now are ready to start formatting the document. Now, as we navigate through our document, I can control roll my mouse button to zoom in and out of my document. But we're going to be wanting to perhaps adjust text and things. Navigating through our document, you're, the easiest, most natural is just click somewhere where you want to type. But suppose I want to change a word or delete a word. Double clicking is your next best friend in working with documents. Double clicking lets you select a whole word. Triple clicking lets you select an entire paragraph. But you got to do it decent speed. One, two, three. Oh, actually, it's, I didn't have to go too fast there. Triple clicking is something that not many people know, but if you want to get a quick selection of the entire paragraph, just a triple click. <clears throat> Another way is click and drag through the margin lets you automatically select entire lines of text. Clicking once in the margin will select that entire line. Clicking and dragging through the margin lets you select line by line. Clicking and dragging selects that text. Shift click, shift click lets you select from where you started to where you are now. Shift click takes you there. Shift click again takes you there. Back up, shift click takes you there. So shift clicking, especially in large documents, like I want to select this and then I got to go three pages down. Shift click selects that, everything in between. That's very handy. Control click and drag is handy when you want to select multiple things that aren't connected. We call that uh, non-contiguous. There's a rare time where I use that. And what the worst thing I'll do is if I, forget, I shift click, and then I forget to shift click on one other thing, and, oh, and I lost the other ones. So don't do too many control clicks if you want to have it work. Do a few and then say, OK, what did I want to do with those? Yes? Don't worry about logging in then. Okay. You don't need to log in. If it says to log in, just say skip. And that, that just means I'm not enslaving myself to what Microsoft does or offers to me when I sign in. So okay. yeah, any sign in, you really don't need to. Uh, it, let me know. Send me an email if you want to be signing in, and I can send you a password reset. Yeah, and the way we have our, the way they organize it, they can't do an automatic send you a reset my password. We have to do it for you for some reason. Question? Okay, now we're ready to do some formatting. There's other ways to navigate my document. Use, and something small like this is really, really not that useful, but there is control and all your insert page up, page downs take you to different places on your document. There's control, alt control, page up, page down, home, and takes you throughout your document, top and bottom. Uh, again, more useful when you have a huge document. And that will be in the chapter quiz. Remember, there's chapter quizzes with every chapter now as we start this textbook, which you are welcome to bring to class. You don't have to bring to class, but you're welcome to have it there with you. Uh, the quizzes over the chapter go over some of these uh, extra details that are useful to know. Remember, the quizzes in the chapters are open book. You can have the book open. You can take it multiple times. I think it gives you at least three attempts and it remembers the, be the best score. So you're welcome to have that open, check it off the answers. You can work on it with friends. It's just a way to review the material uh, and give you credit for that. Okay, so now let's get going at formatting our document. And remember what we want it to, we're gonna want it to look like. Let's bring back what we wanna, want that to look like and then get going at formatting in that way. Here's what we have, and here's what we want it to look like. We have the content, and now we want to make it look like this, nice and pretty and eye-catching little poster. It's not going to be that hard to go from here to here, but we're going to make sure you're comfortable with the, the techniques to do that. And I'm going to show you a better technique than they show you in the book for one of the things. Okay, so we have our document. First thing we want to do is 
let's get some color in here um, and let's choose a better font right now the default setting is well there's a little blue there if it were a heading one style of a paragraph but we'd like a different design theme that would be in the design tab and we can choose a paragraph style a color style and a font style or we can just choose a prepackaged theme to apply to our document and the theme they would like us to use for this con for this assignment is the gallery theme and there it is at the top it's also down here is it looks like they finally alphabetize it maybe they put the most recently used ones at the top and then alphabetize later so gallery is showing in two places gallery remember a theme is, a design theme is a combination of colors paragraph styles and fonts so I click gallery and I don't see any dram anything dramatic happen to what I have but I see back on the home tab is now my font for everything has changed to Gil Sands. It doesn't look that wildly different, but that's the theme that we'd like to choose. You can always later on choose your theme and it will change your font sometimes dramatically, sometimes just mildly, like the Times Roman or some strange font. You can always mess with your theme later and it makes if you follow your coloring of things your theme will automatically change colors of things like our par first paragraph which we're going to now change we're going to change our par first paragraph into a large font centered and shaded paragraph remember I would need to be in my paragraph I'm gonna go to my home tab put my ins insertion point in my paragraph and my mom on my home tab I do not need to select the whole paragraph if I'm adjusting paragraph style if I want to adjust font that's when I need to have certain words selected because the font of those words will be changed all I have to do is be in a paragraph and everything I do applies to paragraph will apply to that paragraph I'm in to see what paragraph that applies to that's where it's sometimes useful to turn on paragraph marks just like if you change your font and then keep typing your font remembers the, the style that you're typing same thing works for a paragraph if I change this fo this format of this paragraph and then hit enter so it's a new paragraph it will remember and follow the same paragraph style that I had set this one to but let's go back to that first paragraph and we're going to first center that paragraph by hovering over this and I see control E will center or clicking will also center I also want to make the font of this paragraph to be large and let's see if we're changing anything else here we're not going to oh we're gonna set in the book they have a center this paragraph too I'll center there at one and then I'm coming back to this one and now I want to actually make this entire font a larger size since that font is in the this section I need now the text to be selected remember I could triple click or click in the margins to select the entire paragraph and I want to increase the font size to 36 an easy way to do that is to control shift greater than and I see the font size changing over here the reason I like control shift is I can see the effect of that font really quickly here if I come over here and choose a font size I don't well I guess I do see the effect as I hover over it but I have to do more action with my with my mouse so you can use that and also a reminder you do not have to use only the numbers they give you suppose I wanted it to be 31 for my font size I could type in 31 even though it's not in the list and it will shrink it to what's close to 31 point font by interpolating between what it knows has built in specifically what a 36 and 28 is it will guess what a 31 would be so you can always type a number in there as well now we selected that line change the font now we're going to actually change the style of that font using the built-in styles here custom styles I click on that and I click on the tiny little arrow thing next to me next to the a 
and that lets me choose different font styles. Again, giving me a preview as I hover over it. This is the one I want, and that's lots of details. White, outline red, accent color one, glow red, accent color one. I click on that, and now I have a font that needs to have a nice dark background to be even better. 36 point. Oh, and I want to also change the capitalization. I could retype it all caps or come over here and choose all uppercase. Not many people know you can change your case very quickly just coming up here. Looking pretty good so far, but I want some shading behind that. And how am I going to get some shading behind that? Well, let's see. I could, what my, my, some people will do is, well, if I want shading, can I sh choose shading here? Well, that shades the font, but doesn't shade my paragraph. So a control Z is my undo, or that's my undo. I can undo my last action. I want to shade the paragraph. How do you shade their paragraph? Over here in the paragraph section, the shading here. So highlighting is not the same as shading my paragraph. Now let's click on that and let's now talk about color tables. We want to choose the theme color that's in the third from the right column, second from the bottom. But while we're here, I want to make sure you know that when I choose a theme color, think of it as I'm choosing a position in a color table that if I choose a different theme color, that position may have a different color assigned to it if I choose a different theme. So it's really handy to use theme colors when I want my color to change if I decide to use a different theme tomorrow. So color themes, I choose a theme color. Notice I did have other colors here called standard colors or custom colors. If I choose anything other than a theme color, it will stay that color even if I change my theme later on. So if you want to be able to have the flexibility of adjusting your colors later with a different theme, choose a theme color. And think of it as the position in the color table that might get a changed color applied to it. So I choose a theme color for my paragraph shading. And now I have a lovely shaded paragraph that is going to become a good title to my poster. But before I want to leave this, I'd like to show you what I think is a better way and it's something great for you to know if you're doing posters and things and want to have nice highlighted title let me show you what is a better way to know that will allow you to do lots more pleasing graphics I'm gonna leave that there but I'm going to go to insert and I'm gonna insert a text box and show you that if I do this with a text box it can have so much better graphical look so I'm going to come over here to insert text box over here and I'm going to draw a text box and then I draw a box I'm going to do it right underneath that that's about the same size of that paragraph and it it draws it right over the text that's there let's turn on I'm not going to turn on wrapping because eventually I'm going to have this sit on top of that current paragraph because it's better I'm going to shape fill that see when I have a shape shape format shows up as a new tab I'm gonna do a shape fill with that same color and now I'm just gonna start typing with it being selected I can just start typing wash your hands exclamation point I can control a to select all the text that's inside that or I could drag through all the text and now I can control shift increase the font size to 36 now I can't tell the font size unless I turn on the home tab and I can see that the size is 36 I can center that text capitalize the text or uppercase everything on the text and choose a font style for that text same as the other and now I have a paragraph 
or I have a text box, looks just like that paragraph. But watch what more I can do with that paragraph now. It looks the same, but this paragraph, I can rotate. Can't do that with a shaded paragraph. I can uh, move it around, and I'm going to have it sit right on top of the plain, boring, shaded paragraph. Now comes the fun stuff. Under Shape Format, I can apply Shape Effects of preset effects or shape effects of a shadow yeah um, where is shape format because I don't see mine where the little the top is uh, you have to have it selected before the shape format will show up if I click off of it the shape format is gone uh -huh. if I click back on my text box then the shape format shows up if you have only done your shaded paragraph you won't get a shape format. So you have to insert a text box that then allows you to format that text box. So insert text box oh, lets you do this. Yeah, if you're just in the, in the boring shaded paragraph, all you have is home tab and things you can do with paragraphs. You don't have all the cool graphical things. So inserting a, the text box and then basically I formatted my text box to look just like that paragraph. And now back at shape format, Shape effects let me, let's go, I'm going to do a bevel on it first. I have lots, lots of bevels to choose from. My mouse just stopped working for a second. You can choose a beveling of any sort. You could choose, add another shape effect of a soft edges. I'm not sure how that's going to look for a bevel. I can give it a glow of anything. I can give it a reflection. Lots more options. When I make it a shape rather than just a shading my paragraph. Now look what that looks like compared to that shaded paragraph. Look what I can do with a text box. I can make it plain and and be the equivalent of that shaded paragraph, but so many options are available to you if you use if you learn to use uh, text boxes. They're movable. If it's only needs if it needs to be in line with your text you can even adjust your wrapping so that other text around it wraps around it. But since I, I'm happy to just have that sit on top of that paragraph, I'm just going to create it and then put it right where the paragraph paragraph was. Just to have a fancier title. Oh yeah, they're going to really pay attention now that they have the cool graphics. And since I've done a lot of work, I'm going to do a Control S or a Save. Control S will save this. And since I know the name of it, it doesn't ask me to do a save as. If I ever want to save this with a different name, like, hey, I gave it the wrong name, I can do a file save as to save it in the right place or with the correct uh, different name. Save as is handy. Usually once you've saved it, a control S while you're typing is a quick, oh, let's make sure what I've done so far is saved. Now, all we're doing now for the rest of this, and we'll get this quickly fi finished on Monday, is to format this uh, with slightly different fonts, turn this into a, a numbered list, and we're going to turn this into a bulleted list, and we'll insert an image. But we'll do that on Monday and finish that up, and then get started on the second word project. If you have any questions about any of this, uh, the, this part, this text box thing, is not in the books. I, I threw this in there because I think it's really good to handy to know this, especially if you're doing posters and things. Uh, but everything else is in the textbook uh, that you can walk through, and it is in the video. I will publish the video. I'm trying to try to do videos of each session because I'm preparing it for that online course we're going to be making available. All right, that's so far. The, glad it worked out for you. If you have any questions, you can send them to email or uh, bring them up next class or ask your friends. Remember those quizzes. Don't forget the quizzes. I'm going to be reminding you because every semester somebody comes at the end of the